Hello everyone! I was able to attend uh, the AMD Zen 4 keynote and I was very grateful to, that I was invited to that first off. That was very cool. Got to hang out with some cool people. Uh, Paul from Paul's Hardware, Kyle from uh, Bitwit. Uh, got to see Steve again. Got to see Austin Evans. So it's really humbling to be around such tech YouTuber might in that space. And uh, yeah, it was just an all around really good time. I liked how AMD laid out the event. It wasn't super structured in the sense that like, I felt like I had to be everywhere at all times because so much was going on. It was a very organized event and they gave us a lot of freedom to kind of explore things on our own and ask plenty of questions. So I actually took the liberty of writing tons of notes on my tablet and uh, well, yeah, I want to run through a lot of this here uh, in this video and hopefully answer some questions that you might have been asking after watching that keynote. I tried to get as many specifics as I could. Of course, there are still things that are under embargo, including performance, which we're not going to be able to talk about. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can fill in the gaps, um, some of the gaps that you might have regarding the launch and features, support, etc. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be pretty, pretty pumped for the most part. There are some things that I'm a bit disappointed by, but we're going to talk about all that in this video. Are you ready? Stay with me. NZXT's H7 series cases offer plenty of hardware support and a clean aesthetic sure to complement any build. Choose between white or black variants, as well as standard, flow, or elite trims for the right mixture of airflow and beauty. There's plenty of room up top for a fan rad combo larger than just a single 120 or 140, and support for up to a 360mm up front exists for beefy cooling wherever it's needed. You'll also find several fans included depending on the model. If you choose the white one, you'll get white fans, so that's nice. NZXT cases are overall great values as you'll find and you can learn more about them by clicking the link below. So let's kick things off with uh, just a few basics. You probably already know these. Obviously, 5 nanometer architecture, a PCIe 5 compatible platforms, although this will be dependent on the storage manufacturers in question supplying PCIe 5 compatible devices. Uh, DDR5 only, that's uh, something that some folks have been upset about, and we did press them pretty hard on their decision to only opt for DDR5 here, seeing as though Intel, at least as of time of filming, offers a versatile DDR4 or DDR5 platform set. Uh, and that's been nice for folks who are trying to build budget systems because DDR4 is still much cheaper than DDR5. Very valid uh, complaint, if you want to call it that. And I... Their reasoning is that DDR5 is the future and we've already pretty much exhausted every bit of performance we can get out of DDR4. I, I do feel like DDR4 is holding their chips back a bit and so that's why they're pressing full steam ahead with only DDR5 support. And Intel still ends up supporting DDR4 retroactively with 13th gen, that's gonna be a bit of a hit to Team Red. So I, I think that they're gambling that Intel will be doing the same as them. Um, kind of like that early adopter syndrome, you're going to be called out for it, but then when everyone else starts following you, it's it's no longer a big deal, so we'll see. Uh, some more stuff on basic core architecture, AMD was expecting anywhere between 8-10% to IPC increase, uh, that is now up to 13% according to them, and frequencies up to 5.7 gigahertz. Anything in the fives for AMD is pretty freaking awesome, and up to 5.7 at their highest end SKU is just incredible, uh, that's giving us up to 29% higher single threaded performance uh so the 7950x is going to be this is, is going to be the, the 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 true um just all around pack a punch chip uh at 16 cores 32 threads 80 megabytes of l2 and l3 cache uh this actually has a pretty big gaming upgrade here of course with the higher frequencies that's going to benefit you quite a bit in gaming uh and an even bigger content creation bump so 62 percent higher compute scores uh than the 12900k people ask why they're comparing this to 12th gen well it's because that's the only thing out from intel right now the 12900k is pretty much intel's top of the line consumer grade cpu so that's why it was compared to that in these uh in these charts that you're seeing supplied by AMD. Of course, this goes without saying, you have to take all of this with a very large grain of salt because, well, these are AMD's own numbers and it can be pretty easy to set up scenarios in which your CPU lineup looks better than your opponents. So wait till the official reviews, the independent testing from channels like myself, others out there, um, we'll, we'll be running through all of this and giving you the, the down low on what's what, 47% uh, better performance per watt, that's another big advantage of Zen 4, obviously the efficiency increases as the result of the shrunken architecture, the smaller node, uh, it, there wasn't too much about the 7900X and the 7700X, excuse me, uh, so the 7900X is going to be retailing 549 
which is okay for a 12 core variant the 7700x interesting they went with the 700 and not the 800 x skew that we were used to seeing this one's at 399 uh it, it's again because it's only the 7700x and not what we would expect the 7800x because we usually get the 5800x and the 3800x and then the 700x comes later or it's usually a bit cheaper this price doesn't really surprise me much either uh the 7600x at 299 is a bit high i think that's gonna that's going to be trading blows all day with Intel's Core i5 variant from 13th gen, so we'll see how that stacks up. I expect that the 7600X is going to end up dropping in price a bit. That's just my take on it. And I did try to, I, I, I did try to ask some uh, some AMD reps kind of off the record, which obviously I'm not going to talk about here because that was uh, that was a yeah an off the record conversation, but they price things like this intentionally okay it's it's calculated and uh they have assumptions about what their competition's going to do and so that's why they've done what they did um I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised though if this price does adjust especially early q1 2023 uh the big winner i think though in terms of the four skews announced the 7950x so the the top of the line head honcho at 699 that's a pretty noticeable price drop from the previous gens and that's pretty awesome given kind of just what we've been experiencing for the past few years uh and this global market's just been wrecked and uh it's nice to see that the higher end stuff is becoming a bit more attainable i think they're trying to market this more as a viable gaming slash content creation cpu whereas in the past it's pretty much just been a an overall i don't know multi-threaded beast you can run tons of applications simultaneously but it was never really targeted to gamers um, i think they're really trying to push the fact that this cpu has a very high frequency uh, which will not only make it excellent for gaming but also streaming if you want to do some streaming simultaneously uh, and then of course you know your content creation suites uh, adobe suites things like that will benefit from the 16 core layout okay i've got to i've got to keep moving here we've got tons of stuff uh so zen 4 enhances the front end layout you got fourth gen finfet integrated basic graphics that's a that's a pretty notable change so you actually are going to have basic vga drivers in these SKUs, in all of them as far as i'm aware uh, and so that means you'll actually be able to plug your HDMI cable, your DisplayPort cable, assuming your motherboard supports one or the other, which according to AMD it should, you should have at least one display out connection on AM5 boards, uh, you'll be able to run that cable directly into the motherboard and run off of that CPU's integrated graphics. Now, they do not recommend gaming on these, uh, and they are not promoting these as like replacements, let's say, for the G SKUs, which have, uh, it, well, in the past they've had, you know, several Vega cores, etc., these are not um, <laughs> these are not equipped for for that. Um, they do have I think I think two cores, which is just not just not enough for really any modern gaming. I mean you might be able to play like Minesweeper and a few other smaller things, but uh, it, it's not a graph a, a discrete graphics card replacement is what I'm trying to say there. It is nicer that they have it, and I think from a troubleshooting perspective, especially with the Fixer Flop series that we do here, it's going to be really nice to have that onboard graphics support because we can bypass a discrete card automatically just by rerouting where that display cable is connected. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. They're touting 49% more performance at some power draw, um, at, at same power draw, sorry, as Gen, as Zen 3. So if you match the power draws between the two generations, they're saying that you can get 49% more performance out of Zen 4 versus Zen 3. So this is these are their own right generations, their own architectures here that they're testing. They're not comparing to the competition. So I don't see why they would be lying about this or trying to misinterpret or misrepresent, I should say. 50% um, less... I don't even know what I wrote here. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> oh, 50% 50, 50 less core plus L2 cache area versus Intel 12th gen. So uh, the 5 nanometer node, obviously allowing them to shrink the overall die size. Uh, we do expect 3D Vcache to be announced at some point uh, here soon, as well as Zen 4C, which they're saying is more server oriented. Uh, let's see, differences between AM4 and AM5. This is a pretty important one here. So five supported CPU architectures on AM4, four process nodes. And the big question we were all asking was, is AM5 going to be as future proof in the sense that if you adopt AM5 early, could you just continuously swap in and out newer and newer generations of Zen architectures and not have to completely upgrade chipsets, upgrade motherboards? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, so we expect that it should support 
I'm told anywhere between three and four generations of Ryzen CPUs, so that's pretty cool. AM5 has a 1718-pin LGA layout, so this means that the pins will be in the socket of the motherboard itself. They will not be under the CPU, so in many ways, very similar to what Intel is currently offering. We will have X670 and B650 motherboards available. We'll also have extreme variants of these motherboards, and... We needed a lot of clarification on this because uh, I remember I was sitting at a table with Kyle and Paul and uh, we were we were grilling the RAMD rep, but we, we asked them a lot of questions about this because it didn't seem very straightforward what the different, the, what, what the differences were between the extreme and the non-extreme variant. So essentially you have four different, uh, four different chipsets, even though they're really, it's really just two different chipsets. and. If you want to be even more specific than that, technically X670 is just two identical B650 chipsets. Uh, well, chips, I should say. So, like, a, a B650 motherboard will have one chipset, right, under a, a heatsink, whatever. And then the B670 variant, or sorry, the X670 variant, God, there's so many different names going on here. The X version of these motherboards will have two of the same B650 chip on board. And that'll give you a lot more I.O. throughput, which is, I mean, that's what a lot of folks look for in the higher end motherboards, more USB connections, etc. The B650 motherboards, which are going to be the basic, the, the, the most affordable of the two lineups or four lineups, however you look at it, uh, will not be guaranteed to have PCIe 5.0 support, although AMD is saying it is certainly possible. It depends on the motherboard vendor. The extreme variant of the B650 chipset uh, will require, I believe, at least one PCIe 5-capable storage connection. That's that. That's what I'm told. And same goes for the Extreme on the X670 side, although it is certainly possible that uh, a vanilla X670 non-Extreme motherboard could have PCIe 5 both at the uh, slot level, the X16 slot, or uh, at the M.2 slot. Um, so be very wary looking into motherboards when shopping for, um, yeah, for just a new platform for Ryzen. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of nuance, I think, at the onset, and I think motherboard vendors are going to do this very differently because there isn't a set in stone requirement for what is what, apart from the, the sheer physical difference between X670 and B650, which of course is the, the number of onboard chipsets. I guess to an extent I'm not surprised because AMD isn't responsible for this. I mean, again, they can set kind of the guidelines, the expectations, but it's up to the vendors to decide what they want to include in each, in each motherboard SKU. We are told that the cheapest B650 motherboards will start from $125, which seems awfully unlikely just based on historical precedent. Yes, I expect boards like that will eventually squeak their way out into the market, but from the onset, I don't think we'll see any $125 B-series motherboard, I hate to say it. Although I, I would love to be wrong, uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, let's see. They also teased RDNA 3, kind of a quick tangent. I don't know why they, I, mean, I guess just to build some hype, they didn't really talk much about it, but uh, they did hint at it like a 50% more performance per watt metric, which it's it's not, um, <laughs> it's not an out of the park assumption. I guess we shouldn't be all that surprised. So uh, back to motherboards for a quick second. B650 and X670 boards will all support overclocking regardless of if they are extreme boards or not. Again, the extreme nomenclature I think just ties into PCIe 5 support, which is, at least that's what I was told by the rep that we uh, that we grilled more or less. Okay, now, so we have DDR4 versus DDR5 limitations. Uh, this is what, uh, th this was what kind of threw me off as well. Again, just opting for DDR5. Uh, they are going to have their own, it's, it's not really theirs, it's open source, open license, uh, X, golly, where did I write this? Aha, here it is. So they call it Expo Technology, and think of it in a way similar to XMP, uh, but all AMD is asking is that the memory manufacturers just be upfront about timings, uh, sub-timings, etc. I, I actually really like this approach. I hope it catches on and I hope that uh, it stays as transparent as it, as it is because compared to XMP right now, there's a lot of nuance surrounding what actually, you know, validates an XMP 
uh, dim and the especially the sub timings that go into it which not a lot of folks look at which I think is why it's so vague I think it's intentional uh, Expo forces vendors to disclose all of that info before it actually receives the certification so to speak so that is nice um, you can still run XMP dims on AM5 platforms there's nothing stopping you from doing that but of course AMD does recommend their own Expo uh, variants so that was something that I expect something that, that folks will ask about what the heck the point of Expo is. Uh, and it's just intended to be, at least from their perspective, more upfront about what you're getting uh, inclusively in, uh, in a DIMM package. Launch speeds for DDR5 up to 6,500 megahertz. We are told that the sweet spot, and this kind of depended on who you asked at AMD, but the range I got was anywhere between 6,000 and 60, 6,200, somewhere in that ballpark. I'd say 6,000 megahertz is a pretty sweet starting point. If you just get a kit like that uh, at, at those frequencies, of course, with decent timings, uh, then you'll be set. I don't think you're going to see a, a huge bump in performance from 6,000 to 6,500 megahertz. Um, I, I could be wrong there. Of course, we need to... to, to actually test this before we can make any definitive claims, but just uh, at least compared to how Intel behaves, which I know is a different architecture. Of course, the Infinity Fabric is not as dependent, or sorry, is more dependent than the Intel counterpart. Um, we'll, we'll just have to test and see how that fares. Uh, with respect to memory, again, previously uh, one to one to one, uh, that ratio is now auto one to one. So that keeps the memory controller tied to memory speed, but where this changes with respect to DDR5 is that you have some flexibility with the Infinity Fabric. Again, um, one of the reasons why we're expecting around 6,000 megahertz to be the sweet spot. This is what AMD told us. Um, so that's uh, that's a kit that I'm going to look out for and we'll probably end up recommending, especially for higher end AM5 rigs. So yeah, uh, a whole lot here. Um, I think personally, the 7600X is just a tad bit of a letdown. I would have liked to have seen a 249 price point just to kind of, I don't know, just jump the gun on Intel and force them in submission because, again, the 13600K or whatever they're going to be coming out with uh, i5-wise will be direct competition to this, we expect. And depending on how Intel splices the P cores and E cores, which is a totally different can of worms, um, I think that that chip's going to pose a real threat to the 7600X at $299. So um, I will keep an eye on that price. I don't recommend that's the one you buy right away. If you want a higher end system, you've been waiting for a while. I think the 7900X and the 7950X are pretty sweet values. Uh, just, just based on what we're seeing here. Again, still need a test. I do not recommend you prepare to pre-order this stuff. That's the, I don't even know if pre-ordering is a thing. You might be able to pre-order on a vendor site. But um, I would just wait. And, and I apparently... Uh, we were told that um, stock shouldn't be an issue. Of course, I've, I've heard that many times before, but it doesn't sound like these chips are going to sell out like hotcakes um, in the immediate. I mean, I'm sure they'll sell quite a number of them at the onset, but I, I, it doesn't sound like there are any serious supply constraints. And I don't think at this point, AMD would be willing to risk any more brand damage as a result of not being able to meet demand. I don't think there's much pent-up demand anyway, just given the way that the uh, yeah the current market is, so... That was, a, that was a lot of stuff. Sorry I spitballed at you, and, and I'm sorry that it's kind of um, all over the place. Again, my notes were just based on, it, it was all chronological here. So sometimes we were talking about motherboards, and then we'd switch back to DDR5, and then we'd talk about motherboards and chipsets again. So, yeah, the notes were a bit all over the place. But I did take as many as I could. I, I tried to ask as many questions as I could regarding, um, yeah, just, just, you know, what to expect compatibility-wise. Uh, price point wise and uh, just you know what was going on in AMD's head when they decided to price things the way they did and um, maybe why they marketed the way they did at the keynote so um, a lot of interesting stuff again I'm grateful that they sent me out just to kind of be a part of it and uh, hear what they had to say it was nice to see Lisa Sue in person I hadn't actually gotten to meet her in person that was really cool uh, to see her on stage there and to be a part of the the, the official press in the audience. You could see the back of my head a few times. I was sitting next to Paul and Kyle and you can't really tell that it's us, but I, I knew it was us because that's we were sitting dead center kind of in the back. So that was cool. Um, thank you all for being so patient with this. I'm sorry it took me several days to get this coverage out. I didn't really want to be a part of like the first day coverage and just to compete with all the different channels and, and media outlets publishing at the same time. But uh, I would say in general, my outlook on this is I think I think this is a fair lineup of SKUs, you know, price and apparent performance taken into consideration. I'm not super 
super pumped about this. I, I think at this point we need to wait to see what Intel does before we can really draw serious conclusions regarding competition. Um, AMD didn't do anything that like massively surprised me, except arguably price the 7950X a bit cheaper than older 950X SKUs. So that was a that was a win in my book. But again, it's the higher end SKU. So I can see why they do that just to try to pull more of potential consumer base up to the to the more expensive stuff. It's difficult to do that. So lowering the price, of course, makes it more attainable. Uh, but the lower end SKUs pretty much stay the same. And again, I'm not surprised because of what we've been through, but it would have been pretty dang sweet to see the 7600X at 249. I was I was really hoping for that. Again, no, not surprised. I'm not disappointed, just um, not all that enthusiastic about it either. So we'll see. Um, I do think it'll be a valid, viable option when 13th gen uh, from Team Blue comes around. So stay tuned for that coverage as well. I'm not sure if we're going to be going to in any Intel keynote. Uh, I, I've never been to one. Int uh, Intel's always kind of been a bit more reserved when it comes to reaching out to channels like myself. Um, and that's their that's their prerogative. They can do what they want. But uh, AMD's always been very cool. I remember receiving AMD samples, uh, graphics cards and CPUs back when I only had like 100,000 subs. Actually, even maybe smaller than that when I had fewer subs than 100K. So... Um, they've always been very cool about sampling and giving us a chance to try things out. Um, hopefully that happens at some point with Intel as well, but I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if the trend just kind of remained the same. So no hard feelings. It is what it is. But uh, I was really glad to be a part of the event uh, last week, at least as of time of filming last week. So thanks for much, uh, so much for watching. And again, sorry for spitting this all out, dragging this out. But uh, I want to know what you think about AM5. I, I kind of gauged your interest on Twitter a few days back. But uh, let me know in the comment section below how pumped you are, maybe not pumped you are about what you've seen so far. And uh, whether you're looking more forward to what Intel has to offer now based on what you've seen from Zen 4 uh, at this point in time. Thanks so much again for watching this far to this one and uh, consider subscribing and leave that comment, like in the video, et cetera, et cetera. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.